Hi, it's Chris from Rally Notes. On this episode of the Purple Plymouth Project, we're doing the origin story. Where we came from, where this car came from, and we'll finish it off by hopefully answering the number one question I've received for years. But why a neon? So let's roll that intro and get right into it. In 2004, Christine and I drove a 1996 Dodge Neon Rally car across the country to California. We took the California Rally Series Rally School and started rallying here in the Southwest. We chronicled our adventures on a blog and burned 320 by 240 NTSC video onto a divid. It was the before times, the long, long ago. This is our original championship winning production class, Rally Neon. Sometimes I call it Zineon or PCAR. This is what RallyNotes.com was started with. In the world's shortest recap of a 16-year-old blog, we successfully built and raced the stock Dodge Neon to win three national rally championships. In 2017, I refreshed and sold that car to someone who sold it to someone else who is hopefully going to be on the stage soon. During that final championship for the PCAR around 2008, a special project was started by friends who were helping crew for us at the time to build another a car to rival our first gen neon, it would be a Plymouth, and it would be purple. The Way Too Fast team used our first car as a template for what worked. Well, what works for your very first rally car. So bone stock front wheel drive, check. Roll cage and safety gear, check. Actually participating in a couple rallies, check. And then life got in the way. The car was relegated to a desert field. So how did I end up with it? Well, again, short recap here. In late summer of 2015, I called the team and asked if they were going to rally again and if the car could find its way to my house. A check for a reasonable amount was written out for the purple car. The owner let me know that it had some electrical issues, and I assured him I was a top expert in the electrical wiring of neon rally cars. And then my life got in the way, and the car was relegated to a coastal desert field. Yeah. So, uh, t what year is it? Oh, right, 2020. And weird, I seem to have a lot of time on my hands all of a sudden. Hello, darkness, my old... With 140,000 on the chassis, I'm fairly certain this isn't the original engine. Most first gens didn't make it past the year 2000 without a head gasket letting go, so let's recall like six million cars, I guess. It's a 1998, so at least that class action lawsuit was sorted before the company that built it went out of business. As some of you know, the Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth Neons were all carbon copies using the same parts with only minor trim, paint, and option differences. Ambitious at the time, this 2.0-liter could have been the car to compete with the Honda Civics and Toyota Corollas of the day. The good news is they made millions of them, and Mopar had a hand in tuning the suspension and performance. Successful in showroom stock racing, these Skittles were proving that they had what it takes to be a race car. If any of you grew up autocrossing, you know that one of these won the SCCA class it was in for like every year. They offered an RT and ACR versions with Coney struts and different gear ratios. The engine was a 2 liter, single overhead cam and also a dual overhead cam. Now, the sport versions usually came with the dual overhead cam because it made like 5 more horsepower. Critically, they were both 16 valve engines with pretty different torque and power curves. The single overhead cam is well suited for rally where you need torque at 3500 RPMs and horsepower can sell those sport models. We'll need to check over and possibly refresh the engine. Need some suspension work and, and uh, shocks and, and brakes, uh, brake pads, pads, linings, lining, steering, steering box, box transmission, transmission, rear end. Rear end. How much? Only 4800 4, and maybe new rings, also mufflers, a little wiring. Why a neon? Okay, any car can be a rally car. I'll repeat here. You can make any car into a rally car. It doesn't mean that it's a good idea. So you need a car that they made millions of, and they made millions of these. 
1996, they already had like 1 million on the road, and the next year they pumped out another 850,000 of them. You want to be able to walk into a pick apart yard and have 15 options to choose from. One time, my friends were looking for Mark II Volkswagen parts and found uh, an old Passat that they might be able to grab the rear spindles off of. The P car was a 1996 four door base manual in red, and I literally walked up and found a 1996 four door base manual in red in the junkyard, along with 13 other examples. While these cars are starting to get a little long in the tooth, they are domestic, so parts are cheap and auto parts stores still carry everything. The car has a cult following and everything you could possibly try, including swapping out the drivetrain for an all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza, has been done. Not only do you get a great knowledge base, but you get a fan club for when you post pictures like this. We always had people from Neons.org willing to volunteer to help us crew. All across the country, we usually have four or five folks that we've never met before wrenching on the car. We couldn't do it without them. As mentioned, it has some competition experience, plus it's your sister's old commuter car. What kid brother doesn't want to see how fast it goes off jumps? It's not complicated, it's front wheel drive, it makes enough power to have fun, it's a great autocross, rallycross, and track racing platform. Everything stock is really strong, and you'd be really surprised how well engineered the stock parts are. This is really important when getting into rally. Do you want to engineer and fabricate rally parts, or do you want to go rallying? You know how you should never mod your daily driver? Well, it's pretty much the same story with your first rally car. The more parts you change, the more it becomes a science experiment that never gets sorted, it sits in the garage, and never actually rallied. If you're on the hunt for a used rally car, make sure you start with one that has one of these. This means the cage and safety of this car has at one point passed scrutiny, and you won't have major issues like where you have to completely redo the roll cage, and if it's done a couple of events like this one has, you can be more confident that it was taken care of. Next time on Rally Notes, we start on the dreaded to-do list. While we take a break for the holidays, we'll talk about what's important and what's not for your first rally car, and then take a look at what other surprises this Skittle has in store for us. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, or learned anything, give us a like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Join us in the comments for discussion and questions, and as always, we'll see you on the stages.